Atom Smasher Origins Explored, a force that you cannot stop. A new era for anti-heroes. Despite Jonathan's star power, Warner Brothers' Black Adam, which stars The Rock as the iconic anti-hero, is proving to be an intriguing bet considering the character's role as Shazam's longtime foe. Many people were curious as to how Atom Smasher will be recreated for the big screen when it is announced that Noah Centineo would play the role in the upcoming Black Adam movie. Atom Smasher is a relatively obscure superhero despite having starred in The Flash as well as the Justice League Unlimited cartoon series. In the comic books, Atom Smasher was one of many youthful heroes who gravitated to the flamboyant Black Adam side and eventually joined him in an endeavor to free the Middle Eastern country of Kandak in defiance of the rules that forbade superhuman involvement in world affairs. I never said I was a hero. It is assumed that Black Adam would adapt this plot from the JSA comics Black Rain, while specifics of the scenario are being held under lock and key. It would appear that this notion is supported by the revelation that Adam Smasher plays a significant role in the movie. Created by Roy Thomas and Jerry Ordway, Adam Smasher, or Albert Rothstein, is a superhero who debuted in All-Star Squadron issue number 25 back in 1983. In today's video, we shall discuss the origins of this enigmatic superhero who appears appears throughout the DZ-verse in various forms of media. We shall take a look at his unique character arc and what makes him so special, but before we begin, don't forget to hit that like, comment, and subscribe buttons. Remember that this is just a small click for you, but it means a lot to us. Thank you, and let's dive right in. Exploring Atom Smasher's Tragic Origins Albert Rothstein has gone by the aliases Nuclon and Atom Smasher. He was part of the Justice League International, Infinity Inc., and the Justice Society of America. The superhero's origin story can be traced back to Infinity Inc. issue number one, written by Roy Thomas and Jerry Ordway. Albert Rothstein, the godson of Al Pratt, the Golden Age Atom, inherited from his evil grandpa Cyclotron, a reluctant supervillain, the metahuman abilities of superhuman strength and command over his molecular structure, which enabled him to change the size and density of his body at will. In the comics, Adam Smasher's character is introduced as a juvenile hero who leads a group of young superheroes called Four Kids and storms into the JSA headquarters, and declares that they want to sign up. Much to their dismay, the JSA is not happy, and the two groups of heroes end up in a skirmish. The battle finally comes to an end as Adam Smasher tries to explain that none of them is a real threat to the JSA as Wonder Woman uses the power of her lasso to bind the four. The kids are asked to remove their masks and introduce themselves, and they do so. The true lineage of the four heroes is as follows. Fury is the daughter of Wonder Woman, Northwind the godson of Hawkman, Silver Scarab the son of Hawkman, and Nuclon aka Albert himself, the godson of the Atom. Albert gets an earful from his father as soon as he reveals his identity as the hero scolds him for not thinking about his mother and also for getting a punk haircut. After a much heated discussion regarding the four kids, they are told to wait as the elders come to a conclusive decision. While they waited, Nuclon tells his origin story to his fellow squad members. He starts off by speaking about his grandfather who used to be a baddie back in 1942, called himself Cyclotron and used to work for the Ultra Humanite. Before his death, he fought the Golden Age of Atom and his energy field had a delayed effect on him. Six years later, the radiation turned Al Pratt into a real Atom, harnessing the powers in a suit based on that of Cyclotron. He further elucidates the story now speaking about his parents who got married in the 60s. His father was sent off to serve his country as an Air Force pilot during the Vietnam War, and his plans for going to medical school were foiled. Albert's mom, who never wanted kids for fear of transmuting her father's genetics onto her children, Children, was glad to have him on her side as she received the news of her husband's death. Exposed to science from a very young age, thanks to his mother, who was a scientist by profession, Albert grew up to be naturally strong, discovered his powers at a young age, and received training from his uncle, Al. He was a loner for the most part of his childhood and developed a strong fascination for mechanical equipment. He later met Hector and Lyta, who convinced him to join their cause and become a superhero. The comic ends with the four kids' enrollment 
installment application app being rejected on account of inexperience. Disappointed, they leave the hideout to seek better opportunities. Power Girl follows the kids after JSA rejected them and we see Brainwave suddenly appear as the seeds of disagreements between the members of JSA grew strong. The comic sets up the premise for the creation of Infinity Inc. and also introduces two new heroes, Jade and Obsidian, both offsprings of the Green Lantern. Albert joined Infinity Inc. as a founding member under the name Nuclon and afterwards joined the Justice League. While working for Infinity Inc., he was seen as a trustworthy but fairly insecure and uncoordinated superhero. He had a mohawk hairdo at the time. He developed a close bond with fellow ex-Infinity Inc. colleague Obsidian during his time as a member of the JLA. When Nuclon made his initial attempt to join the JSA, all he knew was that like his godfather, the Atom, he possessed superhuman strength. Al is presumably murdered when the Atom casts a cyclotron under the influence of a ruthless stream at him during the Infinitor's first mission. The chemical structure of his body was later found to have been considerably less dense, allowing the cyclotron to flow through him. After this, he discovers he can also raise and drop his molecular density in addition to his already impressive 7-6 height. His strength grows as his size does as well. He may essentially become resistant to or pass through physical objects, due to his molecular density alteration capabilities. Nuclon made an appearance in the early 1990s issues of Justice League of America. Two ways of depicting Nuclon were used. He declined to date Fire since he was portrayed as a devout Jew. The most memorable moment was when his closest buddy Obsidian, Todd Bryce, finally came out to him and claimed that he loved him. When the woman he was courting, Ice Maiden, came out to be bisexual, Albert was at a loss as to what to do. He would eventually come to embrace Obsidian for himself. Later, Al joined a new variant of the Justice Society of America, giving up his distinctive mohawk hairdo, which has been popular when he first began combating crime, in favor of a blue hood similar to the one that his godfather had previously worn. In another nod to his godfather's heroic inspiration, Al also took the pseudonym Adam Smasher. Al developed close ties with two key JSA members, Courtney Whitmore, aka Stargirl, and Black Adam. Despite Adam Smasher being wary of the former villain in his attempts to find forgiveness as a member of the JSA. Until the Justice Society of America's relaunch in 1996, Nuclon vanished as the JLA returned to its 1995 roots. In addition to changing his name to Adam Smasher, Nuclon donned the modern era superhero outfit. Stargirl, a fellow hero, was being pushed by the JSA to be his possible love interest. Adam Smasher took great pride in carrying on Pratt's legacy for years and made it a point to earn their respect, especially after several of them joined the JSA as colleagues. But when Cobra orchestrated an aircraft disaster that killed Albert's mother, he became driven with rage. Soon after the deadly collision, Albert traveled back in time with the help of Metron of the New Gods and swapped his mother for a weaker extent, sparing her life but killing the supervillain. Adam Smasher also shares a close relationship with Black Adam. Rothstein and Black Adam became friends after Black Adam, Captain Marvel's old foe, rehabilitated and joined the JSA. In fact, Black Adam once remarked that Adam Smasher was the brother he never really had. The unexpected team quickly resolved their personal differences. Rothstein assassinated the autocratic leader of Adam's native, Kondak. Adam murdered Cobra. Adam Smasher assisted in leading a group of renegade metahumans that attacked the nation and top its repressive government. He eventually faced charges for his acts in contact and entered a plea of guilty for all of them. He was approached by Amanda Waller, the Suicide Squad's commander, when he was incarcerated. Albert was enlisted by Waller to be a member of the Suicide Squad, a new team of clandestine agents, and dispatched to annihilate his former colleague, Black Adam. After locating Black Adam, Albert made an effort to talk with his former ally while refusing to pass any judgment on him and even denying that he was responsible for the massacre in Bialya. He was shocked though when Adam acknowledged his wrongdoing and started World War III, his third round of retribution. After the battle, Albert kept working with the JSA to track down a helpless Black Adam who wanted to bring his deceased wife Isis back to life. Unbeknownst to the JSA, Albert visits Black Adam face to face presents him with Isis's remains and repeatedly attempts to convince his buddy to flee the country. Debut in the DC Extended Universe as a metahuman, face off with a red streak. 
The Atom Smasher also appears in the first episode of the television series The Flash. After the events of the finale of Season 1, Flash and the team were able to stop the Singularity from forming over Central City and spoil all of Reverse Flash's plans. The season starts off on a grim note as the team mourns the losses of all the poor souls who died in the recent encounter with Flash's nemesis, including his friend Ronnie, aka Firestorm. As the mayor of the city declares Flash Day in order to honor the city's savior, Flash struggles with the decision to accept the honor bestowed upon him. He finally decides to show up at the event, but things soon turn ugly as Adam Smasher makes his debut appearance in the series. He attacks Flash and overpowers all the police units stationed as security at the event. Sisko tries to capture him with his new anti-metahuman weapon, but fails to neutralize him. As he grew stronger in power by absorbing the radiation from the weapon, the Flash came up with a brilliant tactic of distraction to bring the situation under control. The team eventually tracks down Adam Smasher's hideout and deduces that he sustains himself by absorbing radiation from surrounding objects. The Flash encounters him in order to bring him to a stop but is completely overpowered by Adam Smasher's monster strength and finally ends up in the hospital. Afterwards, when reuniting with his friends and accepting his loss, Barry was finally able to move on as he received a bit of good news in the form of Harrison Wells' final testimony. In a final confrontation with Rothstein, Barry lures him to an enclosed chamber which Sisko then fills with insane amounts of radiation. Unable to withstand it, Rothstein tries to absorb the radiation at first but then succumbs to it. In his final moments, as The Flash asked him why he wanted to kill him, Adam Smasher reveals that he only wanted to go home and was carrying out a task for Season 2's main antagonist, Zoom. In the previous episode, Eubard Thawne named the Earth-1 version of Rothstein as a victim of his particle accelerator accident. However, it was later revealed that Rothstein was in Hawaii at the time and, as a result, never developed abilities. Before attempting to harm the Flash in Zoom's behalf, the Rothstein from Earth-2 murders his Earth-1 counterpart, only to be stopped and executed in the process by the Speedster. The DC series introduces Adam Smasher as a supervillain who has been charged with an account of homicide and is out for blood. Much later in the series, it is revealed that this evil metahuman version of Adam Smasher was sent from Earth-2 as a part of Zoom's master plan to eliminate the Flash. The character marks a debut of Adam Smasher in live-action media. Can you recognize the actor who plays it? Let us know in the comments below. What makes Adam Smasher so strong? An account of powers and abilities. Adam Smasher has the ability to change his volume and density, growing more powerful as he becomes bigger. Adam Smasher typically stands at 7 feet, 6 inches, 2.3 meters, and although he is capable of safely reaching heights of 60 feet, 18.3 meters, becoming approximately 6 stories tall, Adam Smasher has proven to be powerful enough to knock Power Girl out cold with a single stomp. When he was at his largest, and he could definitely hold his own when facing the majority of the JSA by himself. Despite this, Black Adam has repeatedly succeeded in knocking down Adam Smasher when the two pals have come into conflict since he lacks strength-based invulnerability. Al has the ability to gain bulk. The Adam Smasher's mass has become unstable as a consequence of being exposed to unchecked thorium radiation. Al has the ability to grow larger, making him impervious to strikes from individuals of average size. Al grows bigger overall as a result of atomic dispersion, which lengthens the space between his own atoms. Under normal conditions, his mass would not change regardless of how big he becomes. His bulk growth power somewhat offsets these effects nevertheless. He multiplies his height by his body weight to increase in size. Naturally, a heavier person has a bigger impact on the environment. Al has incredible resilience to direct physical assaults thanks to his power. He may also deal with charging damage by using his mass rather than his strength. Adam Smasher is fully unaffected by machine gun fire and can readily withstand hits from extremely powerful opponents when in his gargantuan form. Following exposure to thorium radiation, Nuclon was able to turn into an intangible substance. He hasn't recently displayed this strength, but we cannot rule out this perk from his arsenal. Apart from the stats mentioned above, Al also has enhanced speed, stamina, and superhuman durability. Albert is a talented pilot who has experienced flying. 
JSA ships and served as the pilot for the major part of the Infinity Arc. Albert is a mechanic by profession who exhibits leadership qualities on various frontiers. Marvelous appearances in other forms of media. As a member of the expanded Justice League, Adam Smasher makes many appearances in the Justice League animated television series. He is seen donning his signature red and blue vest and aids the Justice League on their mission. The cameo character Adam Smasher appears in Injustice Gods Among Us. A battle between him and Giganta is witnessed outside the Hall of Justice. Although just an easter egg in the game, the battle is nothing short of being marvelous. In Kingdom Come by Mark Wade and Alex Ross, Al served as Atom Smasher for Superman's Justice League. His new nickname made its debut here and eventually appeared in the regular DC canon. The Justice League two-part episode Legends has a character named Tom Turbine who is loosely modeled on Albert Rothstein and is voiced by Ted McGinley. The character Turbine is a Justice Guild of America member and a metahuman from a different reality. He fought the Injustice Guild as a superhero, and together with the other members of the JGA, he perished in a conflict that mostly destroyed their world. Years later, the heroes had to die a second time to fight the psionic metahuman Ray Thompson, who had built the JGA as part of an illusion. Turbine was mostly based on Al Pratt, while elements of early Superman and Atom Smasher were also integrated into the character, according to series producer Bruce Timm. Or you can be its savior. How is DCEU planning to introduce Adam Smasher? The fans of the DCEU may very well expect to see Adam Smasher in action very soon. Following prior live-action appearances in Smallville, Legends of Tomorrow, and Stargirl, the Justice Society of America makes its first appearance on the big screen in Black Adam, the upcoming DC film that also features Dwayne The Rock Johnson as the central protagonist. Dr. Fate, played by Pierce Brosnan, Aldous Hodges' Hawkman, Quintessa Swindell's Cyclone, and Noah Centineo's Adam Smasher make up the JSA in the DCEU. Black Adam's plot is still being kept under wraps. The focus of the movie is likely to be Teth Adam's history and his modern-day reawakening. The JSA's involvement in Black Adam is yet unknown, although it appears that they will face off against the title character. Additionally, official movie footage hinted that the DCEU narrative of the team will take place in the present. Centineo has clarified how his Atom Smasher would vary from the comic book version of the superhero. The Albert Rothstein that will appear in Black Adam is still learning how to use his superhuman abilities to expand his size, strength, and density. Additionally, Noah Centineo had the following to say regarding Black Adam's investigation into Albert's kinship. Given his extensive family background, especially his relationship with the evil granddad Batty, he is motivated to prove himself, discover his purpose, do good deeds, and establish himself as a decent guy and maybe even a superhero. You have the opportunity to actually see that transitory stage, which I don't believe you do often. The same is true of Quintessa's portrayal of Maxine Hunkel. The DC actor said that Adam Smasher would have a change during the film and that he is not expecting the world of being the superhero during DC Fandom 2020. This earlier tease would suggest that Adam Smasher will support Teth Adam after their initial conflict, which might support the notion that Adam shares Rothstein's viewpoints. During his time on many superhero teams, Albert has had difficult relationships with women. He was seen to be in love with his comrade Fury while they were on Infinity Inc., despite the fact that she was engaged to his friend Silver Scarab. Although several other people mentioned this, none of them feels bad for Al since he would undoubtedly experience heartbreak. Instead, they all feel terrible for him. Even trickier is his relationship with Stargirl. Adam Smasher has never reciprocated Stargirl's love affections, despite the fact that she has previously expressed them on numerous occasions. In the movie Black Adam, one intriguing detail that marks a significant change from the comics is that Adam Smasher will reportedly have a love relationship with Cyclone, another legendary hero with wind-controlling abilities. The success of the DC Universe Stargirl series, which has recently been picked up for another season and is moving to the CW, may have changed the plans for the Black Adam movie. And it's also possible that the filmmakers chose to use the definitely college-age Cyclone 
in order to avoid recalling the more disturbing aspects of Stargirl and Adam Smasher's relationship in the comics. The original Adam, Al Pratt, will also make an appearance in the movie, according to the direct, playing an uncle figure to Rothstein. It's conceivable that Rothstein's background will be explained, dropping hints that Adam Smasher's perceptions of superheroes may have changed as a result of the original Adam's previous deeds. It may be implied by this that Black Adam is the last push that the character required to absolutely forsake his ideals of being viewed as a hero. All in all, Adam Smasher offers a lot of thrilling possibilities for the intriguing plot of Black Adam. The movie is set to premiere in theaters on October 21, 2022. Conclusion Be on the side of good or evil, Adam Smasher has always managed to leave a mark on every narrative that he has been a part of. Being one of DC's favorite anti-heroes, Adam Smasher has survived the test of time and will once again return to the screen. Being a part of the DCEU version of the JSA or not, the fans of this gigantic meta will definitely get to see some serious action that will make every atom of their body shiver. He is a relatively unknown superhero despite having starred in the CW series The Flash and is also in the animated series Justice League Unlimited. Hopefully we were able to shed a little more light on who he is and how he contributes to the DC Universe. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone!